thank you for meeting with me today. Can you start by telling us your name, your position, and your specialization? I'm Jessica Cito, and I, I am an electrical engineer at Microsoft, and I work for the devices team. Can you tell us a little bit about your current position and your academic background as well? In my current position, I am a board level hardware engineer, and so I work on printed circuit boards. I graduated from UBC, and I actually didn't start in engineering. I did a business for two years, and then I switched to engineering because I didn't like it. So I started from scratch straight to first year, first oh, year wow. engineering, like end up getting a minor in commerce. So I did general for a year, and then the second year I went into biomed. So biomed electrical, I liked it, but then I wasn't sure if it was gonna limit me by being like so focused. So I ended up switching to general. So I graduated with a general electrical engineering degree. What would a typical day at work look like for you? It depends on the design phase. So with printed circuit boards in the beginning, you're gonna be like getting some product specification from management. And then you're gonna work on defining what the electrical functionality would be. And then once you move into solidifying the specification, that's when you can start planning. And then once we get the testing done, then we'll just keep on refining until we can actually sell the product. Would you say that you have a particular project that you've worked on or a particular phase in that process that's your favorite? I really enjoy just like getting my hands dirty, like t physically touching the hardware. There's some like parts of hardware you can do that are like more like transistor level and stuff and IC level. So those are not really physical. So that's why I went for the board level stuff at work. What else stood out to you about electrical engineering and what made you decide to pursue it? I was deciding kind of between electrical and computer, I guess because I started in biomed, right? Biomed, it was kind of just like, I really wanted to, I was like, oh, I want to help people. And like, it was, it was like things like that, but I wasn't entirely sure of the medical field. I ended up just switching to electrical, but I was like also thinking of computer. I felt like getting the experience of doing like circuits in first year that really helped me like figure out that I liked it. I liked programming too, but I think it's kind of a mix. Like you can always get a little like dip your feet into programming too when you're in electrical. And what would you say are three habits or skills that are necessary for highly successful engineers? The first one for sure would be like detail oriented. Just being able to catch things when something's like unexpected, then it's like if you if you're detail oriented, you can just see it. Maybe like you can see a problem faster. Say another one would be like proactivity. At work, it's like really different because you're not always like gonna know what you're you're doing every day. So it's you kind of have to like work really hard to to ask questions and like really pinpoint the areas where you're you're not sure of things, and then just go ask experts for help and things. So that's how you learn. To be an effective engineer, you need to have really good communication skills just because you want to get your point across, right? Like if you're really smart, but then you can't communicate, it'll be hard. And what has been your most valuable or the most memorable event that has happened over the course of your career so far? I have like technical achievements that I am proud of. So I would say like at my previous company, I, I worked on network switches. So I actually went from the specification all the way to the product selling. So and I, it, I was the sole electrical engineer on the project too. Oh, wow. So then it, it's kind of like, oh, I can say that I've worked on something that's in the market. But I think something else that really, like, really defined my career was just like, I was really lost. So I wasn't the, I wasn't the type of person that knew exactly what I wanted to do. And I still like don't exactly know what my interests are in. I actually took a break in between my, um, my last job because I was actually kind of burnt out. I, I took a year break actually. I was thinking like, then I was like, oh, maybe I want to do software instead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just did a nano degree on Udacity. And I think like that really just like jump started my interest in like learning again. When I took that break, I just started like studying the fundamentals of electrical engineering again. Because in school, I think sometimes it, you lose focus of like what those fundamentals are. Mm -hmm. So I think going back to the basics, I just studied for like two or three months and just like really got into it. And I was like, wow, this stuff is super interesting. And then I got, I, I felt like I really got it compared to like when I was in school. I would say that like excited me again about hardware and electrical engineering in general. And mm -hmm. then I just started like applying for jobs and then I got, I heard back from Microsoft and this whole thing happened. So I think that was a career defining moment for me. Just like knowing that yeah. this is what I want to do. And would you say that that was one of the biggest obstacles in designing a career path or was there something else? And like you mentioned that your plans did change from going from commerce to engineering. Do you want to elaborate a little bit more on that as well? Yeah, so like I said, I really did not know what I wanted to do in high school. I actually didn't know what engineering was mm. for like most <laughs> of the time, yeah. I went into, I ended up going into business because I was influenced by friends. So I was just like, oh, okay, I don't really know what I want to do, but business sounds pretty good. So then that's why I ended up going there. So it's like, it didn't take much for me to like, to, I guess, 
decide on what I wanted to do. When I was in business, I didn't feel like I really enjoyed it. I felt like it was like com really competitive amongst peers. I had friends that were in engineering and then I was like, oh, what do you do? So I was like learning more about what they did just like from talking to them, right? Hmm. And then, yeah, so I think, I think through that, I was just like, wow, it sounds pretty cool. Engineering is like, you get to design stuff and you're being creative. So then that's what I really like, it really drew me to it. And I, and I actually didn't take science, like 12 stuff inside high school. So I was like really far away from doing electrical engineering or like <laughs> engineering in general. So I actually had to do high school courses when I was in, in commerce. After doing those courses, I was just like so determined on this path, right? I just needed to like, I was like, I need to get into electrical or engineering in general. Mm -hmm. And so I applied and then I ended up, um, going after the second year. So I actually decided after first year commerce that I, I didn't want to, to do it. So that was, the second year was the path, the path to, elect, to engineering. Okay, I see. <laughs> yeah, so I was like preparing myself and I ended up getting in. And then when I was in engineering, first year engineering, then yeah, like I, I was definitely more interested in the electrical and computer courses. So that's what steered me in that direction. Oh. Yeah, and I think the fact that you actually get to apply the science, that's the cool part yeah. for me. Yeah. Same, yeah, I totally relate to that for sure. <laughs> And what would you say is your most memorable university experience, whether it was like a co-op placement or an exchange you did, a design team, like anything? I think I would say um, like just co-op in general. I think the, like I knew I really wanted to get some real world, world experience with electrical engineering. Co-op was a lot of like learning what I didn't want to do, I think. Mm. So it was like at least trying a lot of things. That was super helpful, I think. Yeah. So it's just at least you get like a taste of what different things you can do. So like my first co-op job was, it was in, it was more of like the medical field. So it was, um, I did um, prototyping for like a step counter device for stroke rehabilitation. Oh wow. So in theory, it was like super interesting for me, but I was the only electrical engineer there. And then the second job I worked at Ballard Power Systems. So that was fuel cell testing. And that was like very different, right? And then my third job was like when it, when it really got me on the path to board level hardware. So I worked at Alcatel Lucent, which is now Nokia Networks, I think, in in Ottawa. I felt like I didn't feel like work was really work at that at that time. Like I was learning a lot, and it was just like fun. So then I ended up asking if I could work in their Mountain View office in in the Bay Area. So then I was able to do that for my next two work terms. And co-op in general, I felt like just took me on this journey that like really made me. I had to do a lot of things that I was uncomfortable with in the first place. Like I. Interviewing is scary, right? I think, yeah. I think it's scary. Um, yeah, so I, I think like just doing that, putting yourself out there, like making like, your job applications, resumes and stuff, that, that was helpful. And just getting the real world experience and realizing that like the industry is a lot different than being in school. If you could give yourself one piece of advice to your student self, what would that be? To not be afraid of change. I think there's a lot of, for me, of course, like making these decisions to like switch programs or switch fields or something, they're like pretty big decisions, right? But I think that you don't really want to waste time in something that you're not interested in. So if you know what you're not interested in, I would just like try pursuing a different path. I think it's just like good to know that like these things happen. A lot of people do change, change fields and change mm -hmm interests and stuff because like they don't know what they're interested in that's that's totally fine I think it's it's fine not to know what you want to do and I still don't know what I want to do or like completely want to do right just to wrap up what is your favorite part about being an engineer being able to say like oh I made this product and it's helping people in this way I think that that's the biggest thing for me that's what excites me the most about being an engineer well thank you for the interview thank you for taking for your time yeah no problem at all